let's jump into it. We are still on um, the behavior of seed. Have y'all been enjoying this lesson? Yes. Now, Sunday, we did some extensive recap, but although it was recap, we dived into some more stuff. We always do when you're kind of teaching the word. Um, but I want to go a little further tonight. So, um, yeah, let's, let's start in Luke chapter 8. And, and, and I want to always start with this. If it's okay, I'm going to take this off and just sit it here. Okay, because now that I'm sitting down, it's bothering me. Cool. Um, our relationship, if you don't have it wrote down already, do so, with the word of God must continually increase in this season. Um, it must. If you plan on developing your life and growing in your God-likeness, your relationship with the word of God must increase. I'm a, I am actually appalled at the amount of believers that don't spend time in the word of God um, because that's how we grow and how we live. Um, and then I also said this, I'll say it again, we must eat on another level in this season, which means you must kind of, you must change and hear God on who you should be listening to, what you should be listening to. You know, your favorite preacher may not be doing it anymore for you. You may need to upgrade. You may need to get some, some more solid teaching. Some of us, we have our favorite speakers and preachers, but if, 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 let me put it like this, you're going to live where you eat. And a lot of this stuff I'm hearing in the body of Christ ain't even solid. Um, and, and, and the most it does for you is gives you diarrhea. Um, and, but, but we like it. You know, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like anybody got a meal that they really love, but it messed the, your stomach up, but you just, but every now and again, you don't care. You still want to have that meal. That, that's how we do sometimes when it comes to what we receive. You know it ain't meaning you no good, but I just, I like hearing this. I like this speaker. I like their style. Um, and, and that may have been great for the season you came out of. But God is trying to prep you for not even where you are, for where you're going. Okay? So, and then your approach um, to the word, you must approach the word, listen to this carefully, with the intent to yield to it and to do it. To yield to it and to do it. Um, to yield to the word and then to do the word. It's very important. I said it last week. But I'm going to keep saying it. You must approach it. Not with, I love going down there. He teach very well. Man, there's some good word at that church or that kind of thing. Or I'm getting some lessons that I can teach myself because I teach a Bible study down the street or I'm over a small group. No, I'm approaching the word with an intent to yield to it and to do it, to somebody clicking something. That's the phone. Oh, that's okay. I'm like, I'm like, what is going on? Um, and, and so, in Luke chapter eight, we find out Jesus opens up this parable. Let, let's let's read that real quick, and I'll, I'll I'll go from there. Luke chapter eight, verse number four. Um, It's a little different when you got your at your Bible, when you ain't clicking. Um, Luke chapter 8, verse 4, and when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. He said, the sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked water. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that had an ear, let him hear or let him understand. Um, and his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? What are you really talking about, Jesus? And he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables that seeing they may not see, hearing they may not understand. But the parable is this, the seed is 
the word of God. Say that. The seed. The seed. The word of God. Come on, say the whole line. The, the yeah, yeah, and, and so the seed, which is the word, is designed to produce in your life, catch this, over time, over time. I know we live in a microwave society where everything needs to be quick. I mean, you go to the drive through you go to one window, you order your food, and if it ain't, if it ain't waiting for you at the next window, you mad. Um, society has, has programmed us wrong. Things take time. And, and we got to understand that even the seed of the word of God produces over time. It produces over time. And you must appreciate the transforming progress of the word over time. Um, um, I know churches taught us that I looked at my hands and they looked new and I looked at my feet and they did too. But that's not actually true. I know people who their, their external appearance, their countenance and all that, even scars on their face, have cleared up over time once they got saved and began to go into the word and change their life. But it happened over time. Yeah, there are some miracle moments we've all experienced in the body of Christ, but, but we don't live there all the time. Everything don't happen in this, you know, you know, even miracles. There's a working of miracles over time. The one with the issue of blood, she, we read about in Mark chapter 5 of when it manifested but that miracle started for her at home. And so over time, it was a process of time. So you had to appreciate the deep work God is doing because of the seed of the word you've sown and the change that is happening over time. When you don't appreciate that, you get frustrated, you get depressed, you're dissatisfied, you're blaming God because things are not happen, happening according to your time frame. But but just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. Um, go to Mark chapter number. I don't go there yet. I'm going too fast. Let me slow down. Just slow down, Pastor. Slow down. Say it again. Just slow down, Pastor. Slow down. So this seed that you plant, which is the word over time, will work unwanted habits out of your life. Write down Galatians chapter five. Now, I'm not going to give you the verses. You got to you got to go home and do this homework yourself. It'll make you a better spouse. Ephesians chapter 5. It'll produce a marriage as God intended. It'll produce a marriage as God intended. You can look at 1 Corinthians 7. It'll, it'll, it'll control areas that are out of control in your life. Psalms 119. This is what the word does over time once you planted a seed. It'll discipline your flesh. It'll work in you a purity. That's also Psalms 119. It'll protect you from people that mean you no good. Hebrews chapter 4. It'll produce the compassion of God in you. 1 Corinthians 13. It'll bring understanding of God's will for you. 2 Timothy 2. This is all things that the word does in you over time. But you got to plant it. It doesn't happen because you're hearing this and you're writing the notes down. You got to now take it. And if your thing is, I need to control some areas, then I need to take Psalms 119, verse 9, and plant it a seed. And watch how that changes me over time. If my thing is I want to I be a better spouse, I got to take 1 Corinthians 7 and plant it as seed and watch how it changes not my spouse but me over time. It, it, it will build you up so you can receive the promises of God. Acts chapter 20. Most of us are not walking in manifested promises is because of our thinking, because of, of how we see ourselves. We don't see ourselves even as righteous. Some of us feel righteous once a year. That's at Easter. No, I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Listen, and I stand complete in him every day. He made me righteous. He made me righteous. And here's, here's the thing. I didn't do anything to be made righteous. So I can't do anything to be not righteous. He made me righteous. He made me righteous. He, made, he took off of his coat of unrighteousness and put 
um, of righteousness, put it on me, and took my coat of unrighteousness and put it on himself. It'll, 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 it'll protect your children, Psalms 112. It will manifest healing in your body. 1 Peter 2, Isaiah 55, any one of those. It'll manifest healing in your body. This is what the word will do. The word, listen, will stop time, Joshua chapter 10. The word will override physics. Exodus chapter 10. These are things that the word can and will do. Because the word was never meant to remain in seed form. John chapter 1 verse number 14 says, And the word, the seed, the word became flesh. It became tangible. Now go to Luke chapter number 1. Luke chapter 1. Yeah, it, it was never meant to, to these packets of seed, you can jump in there whenever, that we passed out Sunday was not meant to remain in this pack. It's meant to produce the picture that's on the front of here. Are you listening to me? Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Let's read that. You got it? Ooh. It's hot. Y'all hot? Who hot? Who hot? Raise your hand. Everybody hot. Look at all them hands. It's hot, Jack. Maybe it's these lights. I don't know. Is the heat on? That fan just going to make the heat blow around. That's all. It's spring. The, the air's supposed to be on now, right? No. <laughs> Go ahead, Luke chapter 126. You must around have all four seasons in one day in Chicago. It, what, what, is that King James? Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead, let's go. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art, hail, thou she that said, art. Hell. H oh, H -A -I -L. oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> hail, thou art, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now, now this angel is bringing the seed. This angel is bringing the word. When you said word, you can also use seed. This angel is now bringing the word, bringing the seed to Mary. Come read. I feel, I feel cogent. Read. <laughs> and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Be, 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 be it unto me. All Mary had to do was receive the word. Receive the seed. Be it unto me according to your word. And this seed was delivered to Mary. Mary received this word, the seed, and this word, the seed, produced Jesus became flesh in Mary's womb because this seed was never meant to stay in seed form. 
Now, just like Mary received this word, this angel brought this word, she, and, and she first questioned it. She said, how is this supposed to be? How am I supposed to get a house seeing I got bad credit? How am I supposed to do this seeing this and seeing that? But, but, but because your flesh always, because cause the seed of the word, whenever it's presented, it's, it's bigger than you. So when the angel came, um, the first thing he told me was, hey, fear not. Because I'm, what I'm about to tell you is real, it's real heavy. So don't trip. Fear not. Plus, this is a big dude. This one some baby flying around with a little, that's not, that's, those angels, I don't know what those are, but <laughs> angels are huge. Okay? And, and, and so don't trip. Fear not. I'm about to lay on someone you heavy, but it is of God. It's the word of God. And Mary said, after going through all this dialogue with his angel, all right, I got it. Be it unto me. I receive the word. I receive the word. I, I, I position myself to let the word have its way in me. No doing of my own. Mary, didn't, she hadn't even known a man. That's something, man. Come on here. So, so this seed was not meant to be in seed form. Uh, stay in seed form. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1. Now let's talk about this, this whole growth and development over time of the seed. Talk about the internal work. Some of you all sitting in here, and that's why you can't, you can't be quick to put your mouth on people or judge them according to the flesh. Because just because you don't see with your natural eye the full manifestation don't mean there's a bud and there's an ear. Something is always happening. Once that seed is planted, something is going on. So you're still coming and you've been in three months and, and, and some, some stuff fell off, some stuff still on you, but something is happening. So I can't look at you and be like, yeah, she ain't knowing nothing. Ain't nothing. She's been here too long. Ain't nothing going on in her life. You have no idea. Because before that thing break through the ground, something is happening underground. There's something on the inside of you happening and building and, 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 and constructing before we see anything. And the church has been accustomed to seeing first. That's why we'll take a fraud over the real thing. Dress up something for me and I'll take it. Because I, I, I ain't got time to go through the process and what happens over time in nobody's life. Just dress them up for me. And call him a prophet, call him an apostle, call him something, call him a singer, call him this, and I'll receive. But we don't, we don't want to take nobody that's been in the oven, that's been in the field. David was in the field for, for a long time. Say a long time. First Peter chapter 1. Let me calm down and get excited. Go to Mark chapter 4. I'm trying to speed this up. Writing your notes, 1 Peter chapter 1, 23 to 25, is simply telling us that the seed is incorruptible. You need to know that it's incorruptible. It's incorruptible. It's everlasting. It's constant. It's indestructible. That's the seed we're talking about. We're not talking about a seed that sometimes produces and sometimes doesn't. Isaiah says this word, this seed, will not come back void or empty-handed. But it's going to always produce just like it was planted. You're not going to put this in the ground like I gave y'all on Sunday. And this is parsley. And it, 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 it spring up and you got, some, you got some cutie grapes or cutie oranges in your thing. It ain't going to happen. It's going to produce what it was planted to produce. And it's going to produce it. Man, the only time you're going to find what something don't produce is if there's something wrong with the ground. We're going to talk about that on Sunday. I put my seed on there. It ain't nothing happening. Did you check your ground? Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Just jump. I know I asked you at the last minute, but jump in there. I, 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 I didn't ask you naturally. I believe the Holy Ghost had me to ask you, so. Just jump in there and take over if you need to. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to the restroom. No, I'm just playing. Mark 4, verse 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. Are oh, you going to read all the scriptures? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As if a man should cast seed into the ground. Cast what in the ground? Seed. Cast what in the ground? Seed. Cast seed where? Into the ground. 
and should sleep and rise day and night. Stop. Underline that. That's very important. Very important. Because some of you all, how you so anxious but you got seed in the ground? The next thing after planting your seed is sleep. So why, why are you tripping? Why are you fretting? Why are you freaking out? Why are you worrying? Why are you over concerned? But you got seed in the ground. It says, should, have, should, have, should, should you cast seed into the ground and then you go to sleep? And worrying, you, worrying is like digging up the seed. It is. It's like, it's you know, peeing you, on your it's seed. It's peeing on your, yeah. <laughs> you weren't going to say that, I know. <laughs> you know, yeah. But that's what it is. You put it in there and it's like, oh, is it working? Let me dig it up to see if it's, if it's planted right. And it never grows mm -hmm. because you're peeing on it. Right. You're worrying about it. And, and, and this sleep is not just getting eight hours. It's a rest in God. And, and if you, if, meaning I'm resting in the promises, I, I have peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, I'm cool. I, I've already planted seed about my son. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that to the Lord now. I and know you go he's ahead still, go and ahead. do what you do. Go ahead and do what you, you go, do. You go to sleep like you normally go to sleep. If you didn't have a project, you're going to sleep, right? Everybody goes to sleep, whether you're two, three, four hours. You do what you do. The seed does what it does. He does what it does. But notice it says you sleep and rise day and night. Mm -hmm. So not just one night, but you in a season of rest now. Yes. You do what you're going to do what you're supposed to do. I, I, yeah, I, and, 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 and I'm not moved by what I see. Faith comes in as well because, yeah, he's still smoking weed, but I've already put the word on that. My husband and the wife still acting up, but I've already released seed on that. So I can sleep and rise day and night. Look, and, and, and the seed should spring up and, grow. and, grow. come on, say it loud. Grow. And grow, I like the next part. He know it not how. Why are you trying to figure out how? It is not my job to build the tree. It is my job to plant the seed. And then turn them and say, go to sleep. I got seed in the ground. Now I'm up counting sheep. Uh, oh Lord, what am I gonna do? You, you, no, 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 no. Too much anxiety in the body of Christ. Too much worry in the body of Christ. And anxiety and worry—they're all related. Yeah. The root of all of those is fear. They're all cousins. They're first cousins. Yeah. Sheep and rise night and day. See, she spring up and grow. You know it not how. For the earth bring it forth fruit of herself. You ain't got to do nothing. First the blade. You can't discount the blade though. There you go. Talk about sometimes the Sometimes when, when you see that little bitty green bud come up there and it's like, ah, that's, that ain't nothing. When you see, you pray for your husband to stop acting a fool and maybe today he come home on time and he's been late. Oh, that ain't nothing. You have to make sure you know the, the blade is there. If that's working, I know something else is coming. I know that the ear is coming. I know that the full corn in the ear. So I always tell people, don't miscount the blade or don't discount the blade. That's actually... Even though you know you planted the seed, you know it's there. That's your first indication that the word is working. Yeah. So you cannot discount it. You cannot discount it. That's the first indication. I like that. That it's working. Yeah. It, so, many of us, so many of us jump right to the full corn in the ear. <laughs> and if we don't see that, we ain't going to celebrate. We ain't going to rejoice. Yeah. I'm still mad. I'm still in my feelings. No, 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 no. Yeah. If there's a bud, it's working. Yeah. Something is happening. You know, you said it takes uh, the zucchini. You said Sunday, three how weeks. many weeks? Three weeks. But how many weeks of that three before you even see anything? You don't see any fruit until, what, the third week maybe? So you plant that zucchini seed and two weeks go by and you don't see no zucchini. What you gonna do? But you see leaves. And what else you say you see? And flowers, that's all coming up from the seed. That's the, that's the blade. She had a good natural example. Yeah, he ain't been coming home, but he came home once this week on time. 
That don't mean nothing. He still he should have came home yesterday on time. No, 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 no. That's the blade. You cannot discount the transforming progress of the word over time and the deep work the word does. It works deep. The first thing this, this seed does is it uproots old seed. That's, that's what's happening on the ground. It's getting rid of the, it, it's, 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 it, if you plant a seed for, for, to be more happier and have more joy and, more, and enjoy life and not be so mean and, and, and evil, it, it's got to deal with that first. It don't just start growing happy life on top of bitter life. It gets rid of bitter life first. That's the deep work happening over time. Don't, don't discount that. Don't discount that. Keep reading. First the blade. Then the ear. After that, the full corn in the ear. In that order. First the blade, then the ear. After that, the full corn in it. But my girlfriend, she got full corn right away. She lied. That's false fruit. It, it's uh, like those, you, you talk about the every fruit has... Every fruit has a seed in it. Mm -hmm. And you get those seedless watermelon. Those are man-made. Those are not natural. That's not a natural fruit. That's, so it's, it's false. It false looks fruit. pretty. And it may even taste good. And it may good. taste good, but it's false. So you know, say, I want the real thing. Come on here. <laughs> only the seed, write this down, of the word of God, only, only seed has the ability to internally grow you and develop you into who and what God intended for you to be. Y'all got that? You know, only seed has the ability to internally grow you and develop you into who and what God intended for you to be. Only seed has the ability to internally grow you and develop you into who and what God intended for you to be. Only seed has the ability to internally grow you and develop you into who and what God intended for you to be. Jeremiah 29, I have an expected end for you. We have been shouting for that expected end. We've been sowing money for that expected end. And we should have been sowing seed for that expected end. Seed of the word of God to show this is the expected end God has for me. Here's where I am now. Let me sow seed to get there. Word seed. Money jacked up, sow word seed. What, what, if you're challenged in your finances, what word seed can you sow to start fixing that? Somebody help me. Let, let, let's talk on that level tonight as well because I want you to leave here and know, and know what to do. If you're challenged in your finances, what word seed can you sow in the ground and then go through the process of first the blade, then the ear? Who, who has something? Genesis 39 verse 3. What does that say? That's Genesis 39 and verse number 3. Get him a microphone. I want y'all to hear that. Yeah, that was good what you just said. Say it again. Genesis 39 verse 3, I have prospered in all areas of my, of my life from mental, social, financial, and spiritual. I have prospered in all areas of my life. You said spiritually? Spiritual, financial, financial, mental. 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 I'm sorry. Mental. That's okay. Sp um, I have. <laughs> you, know, you, you said it. I just want to get the last part. Mental, physical, mental, phys financial. Mental and spiritual. And spiritual. Good. 39 and 3. Somebody has a hand way in the back. A hand way in the back. Come on, come on. I didn't plan on doing this either, so I know. Run, Deacon, run. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Psalms 3410, because I seek the Lord, I shall not lack, lack any beneficial thing. Yeah, because I seek the Lord, I shall not lack any beneficial thing. That's Psalms 34 and 10. One upstairs, holler down. And let me help you with that. That's a good one. And because, we, because the Bible is a principle Bible, we can use it for finances. But the original text is not even talking about money. But you can use it for that. 
because it's a principal Bible. So you got to get some kind of seed. There's another hand upstairs. One more. Second Corinthians chapter nine. That's what he just read. She read Luke six. So what you do, you take that seed and you say, pull up second Corinthians nine on the screen so we can see it. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six is what he just read. You read six through nine or six through eight, something like that. Yeah. Put it up on the screen. Um, put it up in the, in the, in the, in the, in the King James, no, the NLT. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Are y'all getting this? Yes. And I thank God that he will generously provide all I need and I will always have everything I need and plenty left over to share with others. What I just did was plant a seed. It's just that easy. And I plant that seed every day. I can, I can plant it one time. Ver verse nine, verse nine. Verse 10. Yeah, I won't go to all that, but you saw what I just said, right? <laughs> go, pull, pull up 1 pull up Corinthians 13 in the NLT. You, you, you want to walk in more love that's been lacking in your life and your marriage? So to see. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. NLT. And I thank God that I'm patient and I'm kind. I'm not jealous or boastful or proud. Verse number five. I'm not rude and I don't demand my own way. I'm not irritable and I keep no record of being wrong. Come on. I don't rejoice about injustice, but I rejoice when the truth wins out. Come on. Verse number seven. I never give up. I never lose faith. I'm always hopeful, and I endure through every circumstance. I thank you that the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost, and I walk in it every day in Jesus' name. You sow your seed, and you see the word begin to work in your life over time. You see when you used to respond harsh and bitterly, that begin to change. It may not, you, may, you ain't going to get the full corner in the ear right away. You're going to get the blade first. So you may do good three days, and he may come home and say something wrong, and you may snap. You, you, you may react. Then the Holy Ghost will govern your response. Because you've been, you remember, you've been sowing the seed. You've been sowing the seed. Are y'all getting this? Okay, so, again, only seed, if you didn't write it down, has the ability to internally grow you and develop you into what God intended for you to be. All right. That was a sneeze? Now that, I ain't never heard no sneeze like that. Go to 1 Peter 2. The seed said, said the seed grows me, seed grows and, develops me. and develops me. They're the same, but also different. Growth is progress. It's improvement. It is advancement. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 1 in the New Living Translation. Are y'all getting this? Y'all all right? You want me to teach on something else? So y'all good? Okay, First Peter 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 1, NLT. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Be done with it. And like newborn babies, I'm going to get rid of all that. I'm going to stop being mean and stop being rude and stop snapping back and clapping back. Yeah. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm get in the posture of a baby and I'm going to crave pure spiritual milk, which is the word of God, so that I will grow into a full experience of salvation. So I can walk in the full package of my salvation and not just have a ticket for heaven. Most believers just got a heaven ticket. I'm going to heaven and I'm glad about it. But you live rough down here. We've been singing about being free still bound up financially, physically, these kind of things, sick in our bodies. All of that is not a part of the package. 
This full experience of salvation is your wholeness, your health. This salvation word comes from soteria. What does that mean? Healing, deliverance, salvation. Turn that mic up. Yeah. Healing, deliverance, salvation. The whole package. The whole package. Everything. Yeah. Wholeness. Nothing missing. Nothing broken in your life. Salvation is not just your ticket to heaven. Yes, heaven is sealed for you. But what you going to do on your way there? I got me a mansion in heaven. I got me some shoes in heaven. I got streets up there painted with gold. And it's just so wonderful. Can't wait to get to heaven. What you going to do down here? I want, I want the full experience of salvation. The full experience of salvation. And, and, and when, you, when, you, when you crave the word, you grow. Now, the thing about growth is, write this down. Growth simply requires time and exposure. How many of y'all got children? How many of y'all um, help them grow? No, 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 naturally. Huh? They just grow. They wake up Monday, they wear a size 7, they wake up Friday, they wear a size 13. They just grow. You say, you say what is happening? Girl, you just, you just sprouting up, you're just growing. It just happens, little effort. They're not in the room saying, I, I want to grow, I want to grow, I want to grow. They're just growing, they grow by their sleep. Growth requires time and exposure. It requires little effort. But there comes a time, there comes a point, write this down, where growth and development must meet. Growth and development must meet. Development is maturity. It's wisdom. It's training. It takes time. It's consistent or consistency. It's discipline. There's no development without discipline. There's no development without discipline. So growth takes little effort. You just grow. You come to church. You come on Wednesday night. You're growing whether you know it or not. You're getting the word. You're growing. But development is a little bit different. Development is you now going home and using what you're getting in these Bible sessions. And it's being consistent. It is disciplining yourself. It is, it is, it is submitting to correction. It is self-control. It is obedience. It is, it is all of this is training. Um, and it has to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Even. Because what happens is you'll start developing and you'll be strong in one point but very weak in another. What would happen, JW, if I came to the gym and I only worked on legs for an entire year. What would happen? Tur turn the, turn the, is his mic on? Say it again. Your, leg, your legs would be bigger, your body would be unproportioned. So if I worked on just legs all year, it wouldn't help my, my stomach and, 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 and shoulder, it wouldn't help none of that? Well, it is one of the largest muscles in I'm your body. I'm messing my illustration. Yes, sir. No, okay. it won't. I'm just <laughs> <at all. laughs> you, 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 you said it the first time. I'll have big legs. I have strong legs. See? But the other parts that I didn't give attention to, they won't be as strong. Won't be as toned. That's why you need a pastor. A pastor helps you develop evenly. That's why when you go to a local church, to my growth and development through the word, you just can't be apostolic driven or healing driven or prophetic driven because now you're strong in healing but you're weak in family. You're strong in faith but you don't get along with your spouse. We got to work on legs and back and arms and shoulder and gut and everything so we can be all together right. Yes. Does, that, does that make sense? Amen. 
Developing also, write this down, talking about this seed, it has intentional discomfort. I remember when I used to work out with JW, it didn't feel good. There were some times back when you was at B Fit, I thought I was going to die. And I was saying to myself, well, I ain't never come back when I leave here. I just felt like it's over. And I got two kids at home and I got a wife and it's just not looking good for me right now. But when you are developing, the pain is intentional. It comes with the process. When you sow the word for anything, whether it's peace, joy, house, car, love, lust, whatever, there's going to be a period of time where you're going to be very uncomfortable because the word is now working out of you and working in you. It's working something out of you and working something in you and it's not going to feel good. It's not going to feel good to plant love seed and you're used to snapping off and cussing everybody off, cussing everybody out and the Holy Spirit tell you shut up. That don't feel good. It's kind of like when you're on the fast. You feel like you're going to die the first week. Uh, maybe it's just me. We had our fast in January. I know I wasn't, but you feel like, oh my God. Like I ain't ate in three years and we just ate 35 meals just for Christmas alone. It's like, you good. Go to Hebrews 5. Verse 11. You gonna read for me, Kojic lady? Five, verse, 11. verse 11. Are y'all getting this? Yes. Now, now here's what I want you to do. Sunday we wrote three things down that we want out and three things we want in. Mm -hmm. and now some people said they, they couldn't find and they wanted out. I don't understand that. Yeah. That pride. You know, there's some deliverance needed there from self-righteousness because we all got something we need to get out. Say amen to that. Amen. Now, did anybody match seed with that already, or are you still working on it? Anybody match seed with their list? Anybody did the homework? You did the homework? Great. We want to hear about it. Maybe I shouldn't put you on a spot like that. Give us one of the things and give us the seed. Because you might not be able to share all of them. But give us one of the things you wrote and give us the seed. So I, I, no, here's what I want to do. I want to, I want to, I want us to journey together. I can easily sit here and talk to you or walk the floor and teach a lesson, and it's great. But I want to make sure when you leave here, you got this. So when you come back in three months, you have parsley. And not steal seed in the pack. Are you listening to me? Give me one of your things and give me your seed. You. Um, at, um, one of the things I want out, I don't want in my life is like worries. Mm -hmm. So I did, uh, Philippians four, six, and seven. And that says, I am not anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, I present my request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, shall guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. The peace of God to guard your heart and mind. See how easy that is? That, that's, that's, that's what she want out. She planted seed to get that out and get something else in. What she'll get in is the peace of God, the grace of God, the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Now here's the thing. It's not that we're trying to get it from somewhere because it don't exist. It's just that we're clouded by life and, and unrenewed soul habits that we forget what belongs to us. 
But although it belongs to us, it still works by seed. Remember we told you last Sunday, everything works by this law. Thank you, Sister Cassandra. Anybody else did it? Nobody did the homework. Courtney, hey, sweetie, give us what you got. She need a mic. We want to hear you, dear. There are tons of people watching at home. This is Courtney, world. Hi, world. Uh. Um, so mine was, it's releasing anger and mm -hmm. anger management issues and bringing in peace. So I did Proverbs 14, verses 29 and 30. People with understanding control their anger. A hot temper shows great foolishness. Mm -hmm. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. Now see, this, this is what I'm talking about. This, this is where the rubber meets the road. If, if we don't do this in church, and this ain't happening in church, then we're really wasting time. Because the point of us being here is to grow in our God-likeness, grow in our Christ-likeness, become more like Christ through the word of God. That's what the local community of church is about. We made it about something else forever, but that, that's what it's about. It's about what she just did. I, I, I love God, I serve the Lord, but I want to deal with this anger I got. And, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to take responsibility. I'm not going to come up and just keep getting prayer and getting oil and, 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 and keep going to deliverance seminars. I'm going to take the word and I'm going to plant it as seed and watch it do a work. It's going to do its superhuman power in my life. And so in amount of time, whether three weeks, five weeks, like a zucchini, she's going to have us in peace. It, it, it's going to change her from the inside out. It's going to do an internal work in her life. And those who know her and know she may pop off sometimes, going to say, you know what? She ain't popping off no more. What happened? Now your life becomes a witness. Because here's, here's what's hurting our witness. Nobody is converting. We love God, but there's little conversion. We love church, but there's little developing. You know, I grew up in church and there was no conversion. There was no developing. We had great church, but you couldn't even get out because everybody went outside and smoked cigarettes after service. You had to walk through smoke to get to your car. Or people were drinking or whatever. It's like, we, but we just had service. Because they didn't equate that with this. It, we, it didn't work together. And we even sang songs like, I don't do what I used to do. And that was a lie. Because we were all still doing it. But now I understand. I got to take this word. I got to take it as seed. Like I would take an aspirin if I had a headache. And wait for that aspirin or expect that aspirin to to work in me over time. You take an aspirin, does your headache stop immediately? No. What do you do usually if you have a headache and take an aspirin? You take your aspirin and you go do what? You go to sleep. My head hurt, take his aspirin, I'm going to lay down. So the aspirin can work. That this is how it all works, people of God. Yeah. Hebrews 5. Anybody else? Thank you, Courtney. Thank you for being honest and sharing that. Yes, ma'am. I, I want to hear this. I want to hear this. Go ahead. Go ahead. I talk about everybody jumping in front of me. I talk about their unborn children. I'm just really very ugly. You said you very. Talk to the mic. Talk to the mic. I'm very ugly. On the road. On the road. Okay. So mine is Ephesians uh, 4, 29. Let no corrupt communication See? proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And then I jump down to 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Is that not good? So over time, and I'm not talking about the word going to work over three, three she got to keep popping off for three more years before she stops. It, it, it's working. It's going to work mightily in her. Holy Spirit goes to work now. He checks you. He, now here's the thing about Holy Spirit. It's a still small voice. He's not going to override your will. He's going to say, no, no, don't say that. How many of y'all heard that voice before? 
How many of y'all said it anyway? Okay. That's good stuff. You identify what you don't want in you. You identify the man in the mirror. And you plant seed to change. It's the word of God can do anything. It's incorruptible. It can't come back empty handed. So we expect now. That Mama Proctor won't be. Talking about nobody else unborn children on the road. <laughs> and, and popping off and being ugly. She, we, we don't, it's, it's not going to happen. But that's, that's it. one of the biggest things for me is identifying what the deal is with you. Most of us still in denial with that. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Or we're justifying our actions. Everybody in my family do that. I got it. We said, I got it honest. No. What that means is that the same DNA that was in mom and them is in you. You believe that. And you said that's why I act the way I act. Well the same thing with this DNA. You take this this is going to work in you. Because this overrides mom and them. This overrides whatever runs in your family. Are you listening to me? Hebrews 5. Was there anybody else before I go on? Yes, Jazz, Men, Harper. Um, mine's I wrote down, fear, and I have. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand, right hand. And that was Isaiah 41, 10. Isaiah 41 and 10. I will, I will uphold you with my right hand. I will strengthen you. Say that again. I will, I will strengthen you. Um, I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. Okay, put that on the screen. I'm all off now. Well, we on. I'll, look at that in the amplified. I'm, I'm, I'm brought, I just recollected something when you read that. Is that a word? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Because you're dealing with fear. It says, I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. So when things arise in your life, you'll have such a tenacity, such a, a strong foundation based on the word, it, it won't even affect you. And, and, and the reason fear hits us, even as believers, is because we don't have this foundation set. You know, you, 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 you get your foot set and you can, take, you can take anything coming at you. But some catch you off guard and you ain't prepped for it. That's why, that's why you got to daily, got to daily, got to daily take doses of this word. So when things happen and difficulties arise, I'm, I'm hardened to that. Doesn't affect me. Don't throw me off. Are y'all getting that? Yeah, I don't have to fear because he says, yes, and I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. Strong. Hebrews 5. I keep trying to go to Hebrews 5. Was it the last one? So Y'all got the point, right? Amen. Say amen. amen. At home, I hope y'all following us. Verse 11. Ready? Let's read it. Of whom we have many things to say and, have, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Which means he's not developing. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised Trained. to discern both good and evil. Trained. This is going from growth to development. You got to train yourself in this word. You got to know how to skillfully use it. The, the word is sometimes um, 
use or refer to as a weapon. How many of you know you got to know how to use weapons? You got to know how to skillfully use weapons. Whether it's a knife, a gun, whatever, nightstick, you got to know how to use it. Nunchucks. You ever seen somebody try to use those things and break their face? <laughs> now, the Amplifier says, whose senses, verse 14, and mental faculties are trained by practice. That practice. Because when development doesn't begin, you don't move into development, you'll continue to live beneath God's intent and you'll even start or have the potential to go backwards in your walk. You know, people sit and just grow automatically but then they don't, they don't develop and you look up and they don't go here no more or they come once a, a year. Or when you do see them, it's like nothing has really happened in their life because they never moved into this whole development piece. Your true worth in the kingdom is you developing in this word of God. Your true worth. Um, Sunday, I want to dig deeper with this. And I want to deal with the ground, the soil. That's important. I told you before, I'll go back up in my own notes, I told you the first week, I said those laws that govern natural seed, um, it says seed just grows. All it needs is good ground and proper nurturing. Ask your neighbor, say, how good is your ground? We'll talk about that on Sunday, okay? Um, did you want to close out with something? Did y'all hear the message tonight? Anybody got any questions? I think we should have questions and answers in church. Am I got any questions? No? Going once? Twice? Three times a lady? No? Okay. All right. We'll give God praise for the word. I'm going to stop.